Hi there, in this video we're going to cover the most important question when it comes to recording music. What is a door? We all make music in so many different ways. Some people play instruments, other people sing, others write their music down and play it. What's important is that a door, which stands for a digital audio workstation, should have all the tools you need to create music. A lot of people start in the writing phase, so it's important that your door has a number of flexible tools. Other people may just jump in on the recording phase and record a part. In the production phase, we arrange the music so it all fits together. In the mix stage, we're adjusting audio levels to make sure it all sounds right. In this channel, I'll be explaining the how and why you would use different techniques in your DAW to make you more effective and efficient at creating music. Welcome to Buzz Talk Live Toss Up Tuesday. Tonight's show, we explore the world of audio production. Tim Flansbaum is an audio engineer and has a YouTube and Twitch channel called Tim Talks Audio. He gives personal one-on-one -on -one lessons that can help get killer sounds from your home studio. We'll dive in uh, with a demo tonight and talk about DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, that takes raw tracks you record and turn them into a professional polished recording. So let's use that chat function tonight to ask Tim questions and maybe spur some discussion. So with that, please welcome Tim Talks Audio to the show. Tim, what's going on, buddy? Hey, bud. How you been, George? All right. Not too bad. How about yourself? You know, making it through, uh, just like uh, we all kind of are right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, where, where are we tonight? Uh, where are we remoting from? Right now, I'm in my home studio. I'm in Jersey, and this is uh, my little bunker that I like to hang out in when I get the chance to. Very nice bunker. I see you got some right. effects going on on the walls. Oh, I, they do all kinds of different stuff. I can make it change colors. And we'll do that later, though. We don't yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, um, I always like having in interesting people on the show. And uh, sometimes, you know, uh, I have uh, I have topics that, you know, some people might not be aware of out there. Uh, and topics that, you know, we're in the business. So we kind of understand, even though I'm not, I'm not an audio engineer but i do understand the aspects of audio and and uh what it takes uh but you know uh the topic tonight is is pretty specific is uh, as far as what you do and in a post-production um phase of of audio so yeah. um but where did, where did you learn how to do how did you start doing this i st i it was all inspired because when i was younger i was in a band right being the drummer of course you were <laughs> yeah, <'cause why> not? <laughs> um I, w I was the drummer in the band and we always um practiced in the uh, guitar player's basement and they the guitar player and the bassist of that band that had been in a few bands before and they actually had purchased and this was you know going on probably 15 years ago if not more wow. um but they purchased some of the the first available things of like home recording and like, you know, interfaces, like, so they can pl plug microphones in and record it into a computer. And right. I thought that was the coolest thing. And that sparked it. So I went to school to do it. You and got the bug, right? Sure. Yeah, I got bit. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And so, uh, and now, you know, since we're, uh, you've been in the industry now for quite a, uh, quite a long time and uh, you, you work over at Samsung as well, right? Uh, yeah. you, is there like a studio there or in, so what um, aspects do you, I know you're a creative director, right? Uh, that, yeah. So, um, I, but I do all kinds of different things over there. So Samsung, it's the, the flagship building in the meatpacking district. So it's Samsung A37 and mm -hmm. it's where consumers can come in. They can check out the latest and greatest from Samsung, whether it be like a new TV, a new phone or something like that. But it's also built around this amphitheater that's indoors. So we do all kinds of different events in there, including, mm -hmm live concerts, cooking demos, talking head panels, oh, wow. movie screenings, all kinds of different things. And oh, very so nice. when I first started, I was uh, an audio guy, but I was also the only guy on the team that they first brought in who knew anything about video. So I rapidly became the lead video guy. And now 
um, being kind of a creative director. Um, mm -hmm. I help plan the shows before they even get put on and oh, also okay, facilitate okay. The, the show as it happens. Nice. So you're wearing many hats and uh, you're, uh, you're pulling it all together. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things about there is the whole crew and we're, we're like a house staff, but we all wear everybody's hats. And that's sure. the really sure. great thing about the crew that I work with is we all have great communication, which you know you need in any show. Absolutely. And we all are very multifaceted so that like, you know, there was one instance we were doing a live show. We were minutes from doors and the guy who was going to be a one for the show got a call that his grandmother passed away. So immediately I dropped what I was doing and I became a one for the show and he split out and we go. do that constantly. We're yeah. always just juggling between each other. It's all about, it's all about backup in our industry, right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So now, you, you know, we'll fast forward here a little bit. We're, we're in, you know, quarantine and all that, but things are opening up. So, uh, but you developed these, these channels, YouTube and, and Twitch and, and now you're you're becoming like an instructor. Can you talk about that? Yes, of course. Um, so, you know, doing live events and working in like recording studios and things like that, I, you know, I found a new piece of software and it was new to me at the time. And so when I was trying to learn the software, I would just go on YouTube University, sure. like everybody does. And... Um, <clears throat> I would find some videos that answered the questions that I had, but I had to wade through mm -hmm. like too much extra content, which was really just filler and nothing got to the point. If it, if I was looking for two minutes of information, I had to scroll through a 30 minute video yeah. and there has to be a better way. And I just decided to make that better way. So, you know, I started Tim Talks Audio um, with the con with the idea of doing both recording and live stuff. Unfortunately, we, you know, we're pausing any live things now, like education right. style. Right. Um, but I still talk about studio stuff and post-production and things like that. And all of my videos are real short and they get to the point. And that, well, that's, that's just it. That's the key, you know, keeping it short and concise and, and to the point where people can, you know, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, I got like a 30 second uh, retention span. <laughs> <laughs> but and you know uh yeah no a lot of people do um especially like uh, teenagers anyway um so uh you know talking about uh what you do and your craft you have uh i know the word audio sweetening is out there mm -hmm. um is that based on what you do or is it is it called something else and what is that all about um that goes Audio sweetening uh, is just another term for like what we audio engineers do. Um, it's not necessarily anything different. It's just is that like movie? Is that like movie talk? Like you know what they do in, in films when they have to sweeten up something with like uh, a folio? Like they need footsteps for something or I mean, something it, like that? It can be generally right. when you say something like sweetening, it's like it's more like mixing. Where it's like, well, I have to listen to all these different things, and I need to be able to make it so that everything can be heard, but also at the same time, you're not hearing everything at the same time. Um, so that's kind of what it is. Like when you're sweetening it, you're like, okay, well, if we're doing a movie, like is somebody talking? They need to be heard. Is there footsteps? Right. That needs to be heard. You you have right. to like play to whatever's going on and sure. work to that. So um, so as far as what you're descri describing to you when you instruct online and doing these um, these little snippets or vignettes of of mm -hmm. uh, of how to you know control uh, what do you what do you call it uh, what, c track control a track or or uh, make make adjustments to tracks or I, we're going to lead into a demo uh, that <laughs> that we're going to do tonight, and and uh, this way you can actually show the people out there exactly what you do, and maybe describe it. I know it's two talking heads on on uh, on the screen here; it's not doing this justice, but um, but yeah, just like dive into a little bit there, and then we can get to a demo. Sure. Um, so the the everything that I put onto YouTube talks about 
Uh, generally speaking, it talks about mixing. One of the last processes for any kind of like recorded medium, whether it be music, movies, things like that. Um, so the that's what my videos on YouTube and Twitch are generally about is um, different techniques and processes that you could use. Now there is no one size fits all hat that you can do. It's more so teaching what something does so that you can apply it to your own thing. Right, right. So now, I mean, you're an audio engineer, but you also do live events. So uh, you're you're in a studio and you're doing live events. So uh, they're two different animals, right? They're two different things. They are, and at the same time, um, they're, they're similar. very related. Yeah. What yeah. you do in one, you you can absolutely do in the other, but how you approach it is slightly different. So mm -hmm. for example, you get uh, on your car stereo, you have an, an EQ built in, right? Right. Everybody does, you know, everybody knows it. It's bass, treble, maybe a mid. Right. right. That's EQs and being able to adjust it so that you have more bass or more treble or more right. mids right, right, right. in your car. Um, I just have in my tool set, a more refined way to do that of focusing in on a certain area of the base and not just like, like frequencies, base. certain frequencies. Correct. Right. Um, so like in the studio, maybe I want um, something like a bass guitar or a kick drum or some big explosion to have a lot of rumble in the mm. studio. There's no problem with me going to an EQ and boosting a ton of the low energy and the bass frequencies where in live, I may right. not want to do that because then I get into possibly causing feedback, which is the sound that you're amplifying going back yeah, into the microphones. Yeah. So, so, I mean, if, if I was a, a band coming in, a four piece band, let's just say, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in a studio. Um, mm -hmm. Now you, what you do and what you describe on your channels is real post-production uh, audio production. Post production and it's, the pre-production and production phases. If we're, if we're talking strictly music at this point, um, it's, I do all the phases where it's like getting ready to record, recording itself. And after the recording is done. So, so then, um, you know, you would get, um, uh, specific sounds from each instrument mm -hmm. and then you can, uh, I'm going to use that word, sweeten it up uh, again, yeah. uh, uh, to a track and kind of either get noise out of it or if there was a background noise, you, you can isolate that yes. and and take that out i see okay okay so yeah, now so what are you going to show us tonight uh in, in this uh, demo let me let's um, set up the demo sure so actually in my live streams as of recently um i've been working with my community uh, and my own brain of writing a song live in front of everybody now right it's coming together slowly but it's coming together and so it's showing the process of how it's in my brain and how i put it into a guitar or my voice or a drum program mm -hmm. and then splitting it out and then we'll get into how to how we would go about sweetening it or mixing it or whatever it okay needs. so you want to you want to dive into the demo yeah why don't, why don't Let, I go let's ahead let's see if this works yeah, you ready? Uh, I am ready. Okay. All right. So. Uh, All right. Cool. That's so, interesting. <laughs> th there's a lot going on, it, and I know it, it. It can look intimidating, but really, it can get broken down pretty easily. Um, so you can see there's already a lot of colors on my screen, right. but the colors serve a purpose. Um. It tells me visually exactly where I am. So, and this this is different for everybody. Not everybody does the same color scheme, but I right. know like all of these light blue tracks, these are my drums. Mm -hmm. oh, every, okay. time I get, every time I get anything to work with, the first thing I do before I do any sweetening is I go in and I find all the drums, I put them together and I make them light blue. I find mm -hmm. my bass and I make it dark blue. I find all my guitars, I put all those together, and I make them green. And I go through my process. This way, wherever I am, wherever I'm looking, I know what I'm looking at. 
or I know what uh, I'm looking for. Okay. Well, you have to be organized. Yeah, absolutely. Especially on that organized. screen. <laughs> right. But I can dumb this down and kind of just squish everything down. And now it makes a lot more sense. I see. Uh, so generally, uh, this is the mixer, as everybody's fully aware. And that's right. this area down here and very familiar things of all the faders. And that's basically just volume up and down. Right. So I can go into any different thing and let's say I want my guitars to to be louder is I can just grab one and make it louder or make it quieter or anything like that. Hmm. And then I I use this. So I use volume, which is louder and softer. I use pan, which it puts things either left or right or right up the center in the in the stereo field we call it and so you, then, uh, you you can do that um as as a um as a purpose uh during a song yes absolutely um, how you can whip whip i'm gonna say whip pan the the yeah. audio from one side to the other i see yeah so again for example this this guitar this blue area up here that i'm hovering around Right. Um, it's telling me that when I hit play, if I'm just listening to this guitar, it's only mm -hmm. going to come out the right side. But I can do some cool things where if the song is playing and I want it to kind of flip from right to left and left to right again, I can have it do that. Oh. Yeah. And these are... Now, now do you have anything that's loaded up there that we can, we can, you can describe as, as, as we're hearing it or... That makes sense. I'm, uh, yes, it, it it does make sense. Um, so actually, what I can do is first, what I can do is I can show you really where the song is now. I can hit play and we can take a listen to the song, and then okay. I can go extreme with some stuff and show like what those things actually are. So it's like a good comparison to go like, oh, this is what it is doing, and this is what it was before. Oh, I so, see. Okay. I can give you the before right now, and let me just go back to like kind of the beginning of the song, which is back here. So it's a, it's rock, just so that everybody knows. So that's that's where it is right now with not a lot going on. So to make something crazy go on, I can do what's called compression. And what compression is, is taking the difference between the loudest parts of my song or an individual thing, it's taking the loudest parts and the quietest parts and changing right. the, the difference between them to be smaller. Does that make sense? Like, so like the loud yeah. parts can be quieter and the quiet parts can right, you, you're compressing. Loud. You're compressing those uh, uh, variables, or you're compressing those those yeah. parts of the track, right? Correct. So, because we listen to everything, I'm going to affect everything right now, and I'm going to go too crazy, just to like really show a point. Rack it out so we can we can hear it. Yeah. The so difference. what I'm going to do is I'm really just going to kind of dial in um very quickly i'm gonna mess with this knob right here and you'll see this meter go from zero where it is now and i'm just gonna make it go way too much and you'll hear everything kind of gets smaller even though it might seem like it's louder it gets smaller so let's see if we can do this and i'll start with like nothing happening <laughs> So it can so be you basically compressed that whole section. I took everything and I made the the loudest parts closer to the volume of the quietest parts. Now because right. everything is relatively loud, it just made everything sound quieter. But if you use this like gently and in different areas, what it can do is actually make it feel bigger. Hmm. So like if we do another quick demo, <laughs> 
there were slight little changes in there. Yeah, yeah, there was. There was also so, like some volume changes, but so so what you have up on the screen right now that uh, that device, um, virtual device, is yes. is hidden in that tool set there where you can call it up, and that uh, it looks like there's a record button on there so you can record the section that you can that you just did like uh, clip it and record it uh, i could that what what you're talking about is actually called automation and it's basically programming into the song different things that i want to happen so oh okay i, I could do that for something like this in this very basic um example i wouldn't need to i would just kind of dial something in when it sounds good cool leave it alone oh okay then you move on Okay. Yeah, and I move on to something else. And that's now, like uh, each section has a uh, a controller that pops up like that, or is that like uh, what you so, uh, you click on something, and highlight it, and then that you use that same one? So I can use that same one, or I can use different ones. As I've been doing this for a while, I've grown my library of tools, um, mm -hmm. which is probably too much. But if I click on this little plus sign. Um, you can see these are just folders of tools that I oh, have. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then, you know, some of these, like, let me go down to this one. There's way too many in this folder of all the different tools that I have. But hmm. there's a reason that I have different tools is because different instruments, if I'm working on just an instrument, they sound, they can sound better with different styles of either EQ, compression, or... Uh, other types of effects like you know everybody knows what reverb is it's like if you clap in an empty room and it kind of just mm -hmm. stays there for a second right. everybody knows the sound of um, delay which is also echoes so it's like mm -hmm. delay, delay, delay. Mm -hmm. so so th I mean this is pretty intense uh, uh, setup uh, you know you can really dive into uh, the track and pick out all these uh, nuances of of uh, what you're listening to yes um and so what about like adding something in like let's say that track that we just heard mm -hmm. can you add something into that track and build and almost like build a song that's it that's exactly what i did with this one in particular oh, okay um is and that's the great thing about working with digital audio is there's basically no restrictions. The only restriction right. is how strong your computer is. Um, so, so take it back in time a little bit when, yeah. when, when we were still in analog, right? Yeah. Uh, the dirty word of analog. Uh, I don't think it's dirty at all. <laughs> well, I, I do <laughs> because <laughs> digital is so game. much better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, because, uh, seeing what I'm seeing on the screen here in the analog times, uh, you're dealing with tape. You're dealing with actually taking a razor blade to something to cut, right? I mean. So, yes. But yeah. everything that we're doing now, and I want to show you, is replicatable in the digital age. So here's my tape machine. No way. Wow. Wow. This will give me the sounds that everybody's familiar with of the analog days um, digitally these days. I'm able huh. to recreate that. Oh, that's pretty cool. Because there, there are things that there are things that analog equipment, including right. like big consoles or um, like tape machines like this or just tons of like gear that used to that exists um for mm -hmm. recording it does impart a sound to the recording process so i mean uh i i just to stop for a second and and um i remember back uh it had to be oh god 2005 maybe uh mm -hmm. i was at the warner brothers lot and yeah. in uh beverly hills uh, and I had a VIP of uh, a studio there, and they were actually um, dropping a soundtrack into, I think the movie was called Blue Ocean. Or it was with the sharks or whatever uh, back then. Uh, there was like three different shark movies. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember the, the actual name of it. But anyway, they were, they were in the Clint Eastwood studio, 
mm-hmm. uh, and the uh, the audio board uh, that these engineers are working on, it had to be maybe close to nine feet long, maybe even longer. There was three technicians on the board. Uh, yeah. There was a whole control room just just to support the board. Uh, yeah. And the uh, when you look out, uh, uh, you know, into the screen where the movie was playing, the VU meters were like five by seven screens under mm-hmm. under the main screen. And that's what they were looking at. It blew my mind uh, that, you know, because th- this, this is what they do, you know, when yeah. they when they lay a track for the movie or they put, you know, uh, any sound effect or anything like that. Mm-hmm. They work live in in a studio setting with a screen that size, a full full blown out, you know, cinemascope screen to yeah. view the movie. And uh, it, it really was pretty interesting, you know, just to see them work. But um but yeah, going coming back to this though, uh, I mean that was 2005. I want I want to say, um, yeah. but I I can't remember where we are where we were digitally back then um, to replicate it, something like this. They didn't have this. They didn't have this back then. Well, we we did, but it was still in its relative infancy age yeah. or stage then in 2005 because about that time is when i was like in the bands and just learning what all this was um so when i went to school i actually learned on those big boards i learned the analog way first Mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. they taught me the digital um got it and and yes those big boards can be like you you can just like stand at one and go oh my god and like (laughs) be very like daunting um, but once like, it's actually really easy, if you learn yeah. one of those channels, like, you know, let's say it's this one, if you learn one vertically, yeah, you've yeah. already learned them all horizontally. Sure. Sure. And that's, that's the way that those big boards worked. And a lot of the movie studios still use a lot of those big boards and they mix movies live, but they're able to digitally go back. Like they have a, a, a hybrid system, we call it where they're able to record what they're doing live on the analog gear, but bring it back digitally to make any adjustments. So what would be the difference between somebody that a young person, um, maybe even younger than you, uh, that was brought up in a digital world Mm -hmm. and what they know digitally and then you have somebody like like yourself that was brought up at, in the analog world coming into the digital world. I always felt like, I mean, even in the video, uh, in my video background, I mean, I was cutting two inch tape, you know, commercials back in the day. I mean, you know, I, you know, I brought up was brought up in the analog world so I can appreciate the digital world. So now you got somebody that's it's young and it's in the digital world and they have everything at their fingertips, blah, 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 blah. How is that, you know, how would you, you know, how is that different than, am I making sense? <laughs> you are making sense. Um, the, the way to put it is what, what everybody learns in the days of analog yeah. still, still holds truth to the digital world today the only change is really is if you get too loud trying to record and then you get into the point of what's known as digital clipping and that's not the same as analog distortion analog distortion if something was way too loud right it would get like this really like you know distorted guitar distort. right right like a, like a voice that just sounds like growly or mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's a word um but in the digital age is if you have something way too loud it actually it just makes it a square and not like this living breathing sound anymore because the right in in the digital world it would clip meaning like it wouldn't even be there it would just go away it cannot process the information past a certain point right right that so what the computer does it just goes okay you get maximum and that's all you get because I literally have nothing else to do because of my restrictions of being digital. So 
Now, this workstation, are we calling this a workstation? This is a work DAW, right? This is a workstation. This is a digital audio workstation, yes. Right, okay. So, so uh, is this similar to, say, like um, Final Cut in, in a video sense? Um, it It is, but it's laid out... Um, it's laid out differently. So in like Final Cut or Premiere Pro or any of the video editors. Well, you're assembling or you're putting effects, but in this, yep. you're, you're actually you're actually uh, diving into the track itself and, and, and like you, what you just did and put compression on certain things. And mm -hmm. uh, so I, yeah. in, in like the video world, if you have a clip that let's say you want to change like the, the saturation or the hue on and you're like, oh, I want this one to be like really green for whatever purpose you need to. Right, right. Then you can go in and you can, you can say, well, I want to need this camera for these many seconds to be green. I can do the same thing with any audio and I can take like this guitar and I know this is a guitar because it's green. Again, mm -hmm. I've associated it with the color. I can take this guitar and make it louder, make it softer, make it um, have a lot of treble, make it have a lot of bass, make it compressed and like, you know, either smaller Very or cool. bigger. So a lot of the tools that video guys have, there is something relatively related in right. the audio. Right. And then you got your bins of all your, uh, do you have effects in there that you can pull from and everything oh, yeah. like that? Yeah. 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 All, all the same kinds of things. Um, even a lot of the tools, a lot of like the basic tools are available in a video editor as well, like Final Cut or Premiere. Mm -hmm. um, so like if you need EQ or compression or anything like that, the, the basic tools are available in the video editors as well. This software and any digital audio workstation is just geared towards the audio side of things. And how do you export from this program? Um, so it's easy and it actually doesn't take a lot of time at all for, for me, I go up here to where it says song and I export the mix down. I name it whatever I want. So we'll just leave it like this for now. And that's fine. And is it a wave file or MP3? What, what do you, um, actually, what do you I have the choice of making it whatever I want. So right now I've selected right, I'm losing you, three. Tim. I lost yep. your audio. There you go. Oh, oh it's cause I was doing the thing. My computers. <laughs> oh, um, sorry. He was concentrating on the thing. So I um, I can choose what kind of audio file I want. If I just need a sample of something to send to a friend or to send to somebody to be like, hey, this sounds good or change this or that, I can send an MP3, which is a smaller file right. for different, you know. Like a scratch um, track or something that you can yeah, just. It's, it's a smaller yeah. file. It's easy to transfer, um, but it doesn't it doesn't sound as great. Or if I'm done with a project and I need to send it to a client uh, to say, okay, your job is done, I'm going to send a wave, which is a lossless format for audio. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a very big format. Yes. Um, it's like the universal standard for um, digital audio. Right, right. So, uh, and you've worked on bands, you've worked on um, some videos and stuff. Um, any any movies or have you done anything in the um... um no no movie major releases i've done um i've done some recordings for um animated films like the the voiceovers okay uh, of just the actors um and some of the 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 foley uh which now that's like... interesting so with actors there it's not music so you're sweetening their voice basically yes um, you know, something, again, a basic tool. These are the most essential tools are EQ and compression. If somebody comes in to record a uh, voice for a movie or whatever, mm -hmm. um, even just a commercial or something, and they come in and let's say they have a little bit of a cold one day, you, you can kind of sound maybe yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. like this yeah. right, and your right. voice changes. Now, not that drastically when you pinch your nose, but right. I can go in and find an EQ and with experience, I know if somebody has a cold, they're going to have a boost in the mid frequencies because in, there's a lot of in that range, right? And you can yeah. either raise so it or lower it. Yeah, I can take a, some of that cold head sound out with a basic tool like EQ. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, you can make them feel all better very quickly. 
<laughs> I, I really can. <laughs> without any drugs. <laughs> yeah, with, without going too crazy. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, that's really cool. Uh, that that you know, it's very robust. This uh, uh, you know, this unit here that you you're working in. Um, it can so, seem. Uh, well, again, it looks overwhelming. I mean, just for. Yeah, it can be overwhelming, but you know, if you departmentalize uh, the screen and yes. like you did, uh, and color and color coordinate what you're looking at, it's going to make it a lot e lot easier uh, mm -hmm. to understand. You know. Yes. Um, but that's that's really cool. Uh, you know, I mean that that was um, now. Do you have anything that's completed? Um, that um, I'm or, sure I do. Uh, it might take me a moment to find it. Um, I'm sure I could find something real quick if I open. Um, or actually, what would be better is if I just find the file, uh, which was this. Uh, that's not what I need. I need to do that. Sorry. Sorry. I think I, Did I just put you on a spot? <laughs> But thankfully, with this program, it, it's actually it's pretty easy to find things. Um, I just need to go into here. Sorry, I gotta. I keep moving our faces, <laughs> but no, I don't think right. it moves, I don't think it moves for you. No, it doesn't. So it moves for me only. Uh, huh, huh, huh. So like, I can go into here. And if I go down to the bottom, I know this one is done. This is a, a friend of mine. Uh, he goes by the name Vision, uh -huh. and this is a song I mixed for him. And actually, I can just play the MP3. Now let's let's play the finished one, which is well, let's play the clean version because we'll be smart and play the clean version. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I cannot pity them, broke, I ain't feeling them, roll up my push again. Plug was at Benigan's, offer me double them, what I done did to them, damn, I feel blessed again. Me and that money got right again, build up a team and that fire ignited again. Venue got motions, but guess who excited them? Yeah, yeah, look, looking like Mr. T Midas, then all is gone on me, I bet they gon' try me then. 40 no hosts, so try me then. Pick up them pieces, wipe them and leave them. Give myself right for two seasons, roll it up, pick up a square, act like you need them. Give me that money, best to be thieving, gang for the land and no trees and trees. So that's a little thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, like something like that, uh, yeah. how long did that take you to mix? Um, minus small changes that I got from him, um, it probably took me two hours. So, you know, uh, an artist, uh, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know that person, but an artist would sit down with you or he, he would just give you notes or because I know like uh, they, they like to be all over this stuff. Uh, just email notes for this one. Um, oh, wow. Okay. I, I did everything remotely because I did it here at, at home. Um, and when I was done with something, I would make an MP3, send it over. He would listen uh, and then write down some notes in an email, send it back. I would change now, does it. He, when he listens to the track, does he listen to the track in a time code? So he gives you like like in video and the time codes uh, uh, to know where to me, go? He can give me like minutes and second markers so uh it's not very obvious on my screen right now but down here i can change this to be like oh like frames if i'm working oh, I out see. or i can be like samples which is digital pictures or i can make it be like just seconds like minutes and seconds and hours got it like. so i can change my reference so you know he with a basic audio file and he's like oh there's this mistake at two minutes I can find two minutes and got it. Go. Got it. So very similar to like time code. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, uh, that's really cool. Yeah. Wow. There's a lot there. <laughs> Again, it can seem daunting, but that's, 
um, again, going to like my YouTube channel, I wanted to make things easy to understand for somebody who's never seen something like this before. Yeah. And help um, anyone discover the concepts and how to do it because no, no, nothing is cookie cutter. It's not like, oh, I have a, a vocal, so I need to do this, this, and this with these numbers and these settings. It, it doesn't work like that. You need to understand the tools so that you can make this everything sound the best. Okay. So, is there anything else that you need to show us, or uh, unless you have anything specific, no, I, I think we can go back to. Uh, you cover it. Okay. So on a on two three go. <laughs> Very good. Um, that was that was really cool, Tim. Um, you know, I, I I even learned a lot on that one. I mean, uh, you know, I I could uh, I can understand it. I should say maybe not learn, but I can understand it. Um, well, you you can learn. <laughs> I can learn. You can learn. Um, I can <laughs> learn. I know. Um, so uh, on your Tim Talks uh, channel on Twitch, you do a live uh, a live instruction, or do people uh, chat? How do they How do they communicate with you? Um, uh, a lot of my communication, um, if I'm doing a live show, it does happen through um, through the live chat whether it be on YouTube or Twitch, because I can, I have it set that I simulcast. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So whenever I do a live stream, which is Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, which is you know, where we are, um, right. if, it, if it's live, people just put it into the chat. I'm able to see it. I'm able to read it. And if they have cool. an idea, I add it or I don't. Um, and I work cool. with that. If it's any of the pre-recorded things that I have available on YouTube, that's all through just like YouTube comments. If somebody goes on and they find a video of mine, they can go ahead and leave a comment saying, "Hey, thanks so much. Hey, you know, this is exactly what I needed. Um, this didn't help me at all. What are you doing?" And you know, that's YouTube, and that's fine. Yeah, um, I know. And then that's actually where I get fed a lot of ideas for new videos is problems that other people are having. So they'll say, actually, somebody today um, asked me for this thing back here that I have hanging on the wall. Yeah. She asked me why it's like here on the wall and not like against the ceiling or against the floor. So, oh, there's I, a purpose for that. There's a purpose for this thing being here. Right. And I can explain that either in a video or I can answer it in a comment. If it's something easy, I'll probably just put it into a comment. But if it's something that might be good for a lot of people to find, I'll turn mm -hmm. it into. Got it. That's really cool. Good stuff. Good stuff, Ted, Tim. Very <laughs> 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 sooner than later, we can uh, work together again out there in the field. I hope so, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it'll I, come. Hope so. it'll come. I, I miss live shows. Yeah. But yeah. That's why we're doing stuff like this. Um, cause that's why we're live. doing this. These are still live and production needs to happen. You know, we were talking before the show about, you know, the, the software and this stuff. But, sure. Sure. Things yeah. need to happen. I need to be able to do something like this where yeah. I can change the lights behind me. <laughs> That's that. cool. I got to get me one of those. Come on. Real uh, cheap. I'll a link. <laughs> Hold up a truck. No more about it. <laughs> Tim, thanks a lot for stopping in uh, to Buzz Talk Live tonight. I really appreciate it. George, thank you so much for inviting me on. I, this was a thrill, and I, I can't wait to watch more. Um, I'm actually really interested. You were telling me about a show coming up concerning A twos, so I'll be in the chat room for that. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm uh, constructing the show as we speak, uh, and you know, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna try to wrangle some A twos out there and A ones, uh, and have uh, you know maybe a you know a, a a show or two about each position on the show, and what goes and what's involved in that position. And maybe some stories. I'm gonna. I usually save that for like a, a Thursday road story night, you know, nice. uh, to talk. Yeah, yeah. but um, you know, we'll 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 see. We're 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 still working on uh, getting some guests for uh, uh, for Thursday, and um, hey, you not do to it tease it right now, but <laughs> <laughs> you do it when it's ready. That's all you need. Do to it when about. it's ready. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Tim, thanks again for stopping in. George, thank you so much for having me. All right, buddy. Take care. You too, man. Stay right there. Don't move. <laughs> I want to say thanks again to Tim. He he was uh, he was wonderful to show us uh, the DAW uh, desk that he works in, 
And, uh, you know, I learned a lot. Hopefully, uh, you know, you learned a lot as well. Um, so you can find him at uh, uh, Tim Talks Audio on YouTube and the Twitch channel. Um, and, uh, you know, you can, you know, if you're having some issues uh, with, uh, uh, you know, sound uh, uh, recordings and um, you need to, you know, have further discussion about that, give him a ring or give him a, a, a chat over at those channels and uh, he'll get back to you. And, and uh, I've seen I've seen his stuff and uh, he really uh, he really dives in to to his craft, which is great. So uh, I thank him again for uh, stopping in. Uh, so Thursday, uh, we're going to, we're going to, well, I'm still lining up a guest for Thursday. So tune back in for road story Thursday, uh, at 9 PM and, um, and we'll, uh, we'll wrangle somebody up for Thursday. If not, I'll see you again on Saturday for a cooking show and, uh, good night, America.